We're now here to do the draw for the 2005 Waterloo Cup. You'll see we've got the discs in front of us, the 1 through to 64. All knockout cups are based on the Waterloo Cup. Coursing is the fundamental platform for all knockout trophies. Wimbledon is based on 64 people. Now, Sally's going to draw first on the red, the red collar. So this is the first dog, number one red collar. Coursing is a contest between two dogs. The red collar's always on the left, white collar's on the right. First dog, 39. Well, the Waterloo Cup began in 1836, and once you got into the 1870s, the Waterloo Cup was attracting the largest paying sporting attendance of any sporting event in Britain, and that includes the Derby. They get points for making a hare turn in its tracks, not for killing it. Where does the history of coursing begin? When it feels almost in the dawn of time. If you look at the friezes on Greek vases, on Egyptian tombs, you will see greyhounds chasing hares in just the same way as we're doing here today, thousands and thousands of years later. The That's the red collar, the red collar. Every greyhound in the world to be thoroughbred has to descend from Tsarina. I always say that the, the greyhound has been stripped down so that now only the working parts are there to be this fastest accelerating animal in the world. Accelerates faster than a cheetah. The Waterloo Cup remains the supreme test of the greyhound in the world today because the dog has his stamina and his agility and his pace tested six times in three days and no bad dog's ever won the Waterloo Cup. Coursing seems to me to be a monstrous thing. That here we have people letting hares loose and sending do dogs on them in order to bet on the result. We are here dealing with. Sitting suspended. Sitting suspended. From north, south, east, and west. We'll make sure that everybody knows that in the countryside has got a Inside Parliament, the session has to be suspended. <laughs> Perhaps the finest sporting trophy is the Waterloo Cup chain, and there's 160 links which join all the winners to the present day. Fullerton, Master McGrath, Why You Monty last year, and there'll be another dog this year. Pray God it won't be the last. It was, if you like, invented by a man who should be in every sporting man's lexicon, who was William Lynn. And William Lynn was a friend of Lord Sefton's, and he founded the Waterloo Cup and the Grand National, both run on Lord Sefton's grounds. 45. Crafty Micawber. <laughs> Number 19. Against Shashi. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. OK. First day of the Waterloo Cup will be Valentine's Day. It's got to be wrong. It's a nice one, yes. It's got to be wrong. And on the 18th, it would be an illegal act. The bushes at the end of the field, please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who haven't been to the Waterloo Cup before, we have asked Charles Blanning, who is the secretary of the National Coursing Club, who is the Racing Post Coursing correspondent. So I'm going to hand you over to Charles. My father and my grandfather, we all bred greyhounds and trained greyhounds, both for the track and for coursing, but it's been in particular coursing. 
So this is my life being taken away from me. The search for the Waterloo Cup champion begins each year in October. I first went coursing, I just saw a lot of cars parked in a field. There was a man in a gateway and I said, what's going on here? And he said, oh, air coursing meeting. And I said, oh, I, I don't think I'd probably like that. But he said, well, have you ever been? So I said, no. He said, he said here, I have a card. If you've never been, go in free. If you've never seen greyhounds coursing a hare, but the mere thought of it makes you furious with indignation, steal yourself and watch. Knowledge may sharpen fury, or it may not. And off I went and I saw all these dogs and hares that seemed to me exciting and natural. And I really enjoyed the day. And, uh, and then I was off, you know. Coursing under National Coursing Club rules is very strictly controlled. And as far as the hare is concerned, it is given a 100-yard law before the dogs are actually released. Probably the dogs have run some 400 yards before they actually turn the hare for the first time. The further the course goes on, the tired of the dogs become, the better the chance of the hare to get away. On average, last season, in every 10 courses, nine out of those 10 hares would have escaped totally unharmed. Well done. Coursing, it's a day out. I love the, the dogs. I love the hares, actually. I love to see the hares get away. Most coursing clubs run about five to six meetings per year. We don't course during the breeding season because of the next generation of hares being killed. The brown hare was brought over undoubtedly by the Romans. Greyhounds came from Arabia and were also brought over by the Romans. That's Garnet and Guinea Pig, painted by Jean Laurent Agas in 1821. So this is before the Waterloo? This is before the Waterloo. The principal meetings then were at was Ashdown Park coursing, which was down in uh, Berkshire and Lord Orford set up the first coursing meeting in 1776 that was open to club members, and that really took off. And once you got into the 1870s, there were 230 clubs in England running meetings. Arian, uh, who wrote the great thesis on, on coursing and, and was a Romano-Greek, he wrote the words that the true sportsman doesn't take out his dogs to kill the hare, but for the sake of the chase, and is pleased if the hare escapes, and it applies to this day. Nothing has changed in a thousand years. Whether we are talking about a ban on hunting or about a ban on smoking, we are really considering issues of toleration of choice and of the erosion of individual freedom. Government. If you think that the total time that Parliament has given to debates in Afghanistan and Iraq equals 42 hours, and they've devoted 700 hours to hunting with dogs. It does strike one as absolutely staggering. Well, I'm today in Far Corner, how if you want to take it through? Lovely, we'll fetch it on now. All right, lad. Keep him in line, honey. Keep in line, tell him So, to what's keep the biggest line. competition in coursing? Whether well, they watch low cup. 65 dogs day. Next one is the Angular Cup down in Swatham, Norfolk. For people who don't understand the Waterloo Cup, what does it mean to win it? It's like winning the Derby or winning the Grand National. It's the top one of all. And so these were all Waterloo Cup? All Waterloo Cup winners. 
John and Jackie Teal, marvellous partnership because Jackie knows all about the greyhounds, but John has made an enormous contribution to coursing, presenting those old Yorkshire meetings. You more or less live in this, don't you? <laughs> no, no. Only winter months. We've got 12 cages in here. A good estate can make a club. Some of some the Irish lads said they were going to go and beat, but you know, they're a bit iffy. Is that all right? That's fine, John. <laughs> well, if you want something done, practically in coursing, John Teal's the man to go to. Can't run the ground out there, can you? So they sit under here till you come tapping. Once you go past them, they're up and they've gone behind you. Did you do this as a lad? No, no, I never started it cost until I was 23. Hey, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey! hey. This beat, I'm told, as we can't see, comes from a long way back. And you can just see those flags now. Of course, the wind's drifting this way, which is less helpful. God didn't give them ears like that for nothing. Hey, 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 hey! No, we'll get him later. Why do you think they want to ban it? Well, is it, it's nothing to do with cruelty or blood spot. It's, it, I think it's just... Uh, it, the, the, I think the, the lads there think, in Parliament think it's all gentry and whether it's a, to get at them or what, but there's a lot of working class goes hunting, a lot of working class goes carsing. If they stop casting or hunting, what will be next? They'll be fishing, they'll be shooting. Where's it, where's it end? You know, nature, you don't... That's how nature works. All right, all lads. Steady away. The hares are pushed forward and funnelled onto the coursing field by up to 60 metres. One coming round, Paul. One coming to you, Paul. Coming round bottom at plantation now near bungalow. Hold it, lads, we're coursing. The scores for coursing are done like a golf score. So the first dog to turn the hare and score the initial point, if it's a fair run up, the judge will give him three points for leading, plus one for the turn. So he's on to four points straight away. So that first turn is crucial. And thereafter, whichever dog turns the hare, less than 90 degrees scores half a point. If it turns the hair more than 90 degrees, it scores a whole point. Because the hair has this wonderful agility and stamina, so the, the balance of the equation is always so closely matched. That there are no points whatsoever in the death of a hair under the coursing club rules. Front lane into wood, we can cover it now, over. from Lane to Carson Field. It's the thrill of watching the dogs compete. It's the history of the sport. And of course, it's, it's friends. Are you going to have a dog in the water with her? Crafty Cassiano has drawn 14 in here. We'll see how she shapes. Just steady away then, Paul. How many years have you been going to the water with her? It's almost that like asking a, um, a woman how old she is. For a very long time. This bill doesn't, isn't going to do any foxes or hares any favours at all. So I bought four to run, and they've all got through their first round, but one now, uh, Tyler Tyler's broken a toe, so I've had to withdraw that. Lupo, how are you going to make this? If this all gets banned, what are you going to miss most? My dogs. <laughs> The social side. We are 
are like one huge family, and I will not see half these people again if coursing is banned. Hey, 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 hey. Poor old dogs, I feel sorry for. Because they love it. This is their life. I think some of the old Roots Labour Party think, well, they pick the mines off, we'll pick off the country set. Well, we're not really the country set, but that's what they think they're doing. I can't believe it's not going to be there anymore. I've taken my son and my daughter in the past to see it. Both of them want to go again. If they get a chance this year, they will be. And we're course in there. They generally make the dogs look a little bit silly in the end, but I just think it's a wonderful spectacle, a spectacle and a wonderful sport. And now they're coming in amongst us. The Norfolk countryside lends itself to coursing because this is the natural home of the brown hare in this country. Everybody should have a look. If you've got an opinion, how can you make an opinion without going to see it? Yeah. I think the man in the street equates the hare with Bambi. It all looks very pretty and beautiful. And um, you know, people in town still think milk comes to bottles and not cows. Here, the landowner tolerates the very large number of hares and the crop damage which they cause simply to show hospitality, to show sport. The brown hare remains an agricultural pest in this part of the world. They're so short-sighted because the hares will be absolutely persecuted when we're gone. Nobody can see it. Okay, Dave. The hare is a pursued creature. Of course, if they weren't actually conditioned towards being pursued, they would have died out years ago. If, for instance, coursing was banned, we're talking about five or six hundred hares being shot in a single day. One of the terrible things with hares is that beyond a certain range, which may be from here to the throne, you really actually don't know if you've hit one. The gun, it would seem, would be lower in order than that quick death from a coursing greyhound or a whippet. When they escape, they escape unhurt. Stephen, you and I are both disappointed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Stephen is one of the most famous bookmakers in the country. And as the legend tells us, he first came on a bicycle, now he comes in a Bentley. He should tell us all, us punters, uh, the real story. I am totally opposed to hair coursing because I think the idea of people uh, betting on the killing of wild animals just for the fun of it is, in my view, monstrous. And the other thing, of course, that people say is that, oh, terrible thing, because there's betting on it. And of course, it's completely immaterial to the hair whether the hot breath on its bottom is coming from a dog that's six to four on favourite or 66 to one against. Yeah. <laughs> Which is your cup dog? This one. Well, the, well, these both will probably run a cup, these. Good night. Hey. See you tomorrow. I was like the favourite, sleeping with his trainer in the hotel. And of course, in those days, 30 special trains a day stopped at Lydiate Station to bring people from London and Liverpool. Hello. Hi, Sarah, where are you? Even the House of Parliament stopped sitting at lunchtime on Waterloo Cup days. We're just underneath Big Ben and that bit there. Are you really suggesting to the hut that in order to save fox hunting we should ban coursing? I am saying that yes. uh, because I think that that is the view of the House of Commons and you can't get away from that. I am satisfied that all the provisions of the Parliament Act has been met. It means that coursing with greyhounds will be illegal the day after the Waterloo Cup finishes. I 
I started coursing from Pakistan, from my country. In this country, I'm doing coursing for 30 years. So I enjoy myself. If they're bending, I am dead. So it's a black day for you today, isn't it? Well, it's just, it's just been black there for bloody weeks, hasn't it, now? So why have you got caught up in this legislation? We can never imagine. Mainly, of course, because people simply don't understand what happens, they don't understand what coursing consists of, they don't understand what coursing does. It's sheer ignorance which has led us to the position that we're in today. If you get a good slipper, then the hair will go away. They will guaranteed get away all the time. Or right, maybe the odd chance one will get killed, but not all the time. He won? Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, so how much, how much do you win? 100 pounds. 100 pounds? Yeah. yeah. How many times, Mohammed, have you run in the Waterloo Cup? Oh, my <laughs> God. Virtually that, every that's, year? That's, that, yeah, how many years, like, how many years? And a lot of people here have seen me from when I was a little, little baby. And I, I, I remember all the club. I go all over the place. We don't want to kill the hair. We don't want to eat the hair. Coursing conserves hundreds of thousands of hairs each year to kill 169. This dog name uh, is Flagman. Um, he's a second season dog um, out of Tullamore John's Princess. And he's the dog we're going to be taking to the Waterloo this year. One thing you don't want to be doing is peaking too early for the Waterloo. You, you go there and you've already gone over the top. Uh, they, they don't tend to run the best, so he's building up nicely. There's 18 days to go for the Waterloo at the moment. This is just the ideal preparation he needs. We'll be stepping up his road work and putting the gallops up to three times a week. made clear to the House in his remarks earlier today, a rejection on these lines has brought us to the end of the road. It's the oldest sport in the world, coursing. So how long have you been coming coursing? 50 years. What is it that you love about coursing? Well, you know, you're away from the maddening crowd, aren't you? You meet all the decent people. So what's this competition Hutton called? Hutton Wondersley. Yeah. It's the only chance, unless you've got a nomination to get in the Waterloo Cup, you've got to win something like this to, to, to get in the Waterloo Cup. So, so that's the dream, yeah. try and get a run. It's the only sport to follow, and an half-wit politician puts it to an end. Why do you think they've decided to ban it? Because there's a few idiots think all the coursing does is slaughter hares, but that ain't so. This sport conserves hares all the time, yeah. because yeah. this land is never shot yeah. for hares. Yeah. The hare was designed by evolution for pursuit and it's perfectly adapted to dealing with two dogs. If it's fit, healthy and well it'll live, if it's old, stupid, clumsy it'll die. That's how nature has decreed for the last four million years, that's why hares are as they are. Has he killed? Yeah, they've killed. They've killed. Must be balling up. Killed it. No one can be ambivalent. 
know, the hare's killed in front of you, and you can't pretend that it was nothing to do with you. The kill. This, and when you analyse the protests, almost only this is what offends. Modern man is deeply concerned with death and doesn't notice suffering. Modern man has absolutely no compunction with 360,000 hares a year being shot and a large number wounded, has no compunction with them being run over by cars they can't see or sprayed by sprays, the danger of which they can't perceive. But show him two dogs chasing a hare and he's shocked. But the hare's not one bit shocked. That's the extraordinary thing. And if coursing is banned, and please God, something will save it even now, but if coursing is banned, these are the facts that there are at minimum 10,000 hares conserved on estates throughout Britain for coursing purposes. A minimum of 10,000. So you don't want to see the hare killed? No, never. Why do you want to see the hare killed? It's there for another day. You come to see the course, not the kill. Don't to see any kill, and invariably the bad airs that get killed. It's so absurd, it's almost cut off your nose to spite your face. Mr. Blair, his memory will be that he will be he'll be hated for destroying hundreds of years of tradition in this country. A good hair will always outrun a grey you got Lufkits mixing with Aristos. Yeah. And Aristos get into it big time as well. Yeah. And the priesthood in Ireland gets into it as well. And you're all together. <laughs> to the Waterloo Cup. Because all my family, all my sons, they're all interested in the coaching and they say they're going to win it. And that's the spirit I like. The last Waterloo Cup. It's not looking good, is it? All right, is it? No, Jack is here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to be. Uh, Starting at quarter to ten, so we need to first break dogs into the slips. It's dogs into the slips now, and may the winner be a very worthy winner in this 2005 Anglia Cup. Thank you. The Anglia Cup is the equivalent of the St. Ledger in flat racing. It's the only 64 dog stake other than the Waterloo Cup. Uh, 2020, number 59. The dogs have to run six times over three days to win a stamina test. And Michael Darnell is chairman of the Swaffham Coursing Club. There's about five, six hundred people who are actively competitive in the sport. It's like a cup final. It's a cup final of coursing. <laughs> 